for your plan that you have for us, God. A plan, oh God, that is perfect in every way, God. For you know, oh God, how to orchestrate a thing in our lives, God. And we thank you for it even now, God. Touch today, my God, who need to be touched, God. Do it for your glory, oh God. Not for our own glory, God. Not for any esteem of our own, God. That our name might be great in the earth, God. But that your name, oh God, might be great in all the earth, God. That at the name of Jesus, Lord God, demons shall tremble, O God. And at the name of Jesus, Lord, every knee got to bow, O God. And every tongue got to confess, O God, over all the earth even now, God, that you are our Lord, O God. You are soon coming, King, my God. And we say thank you, my God, for what you're doing in us, Lord, while you're on your way, my God. You didn't forget about us, O God. You didn't forget about us, O God. You even remember your people, God. You hear the earnest cry, oh God. Even the smallest cry, oh God, that comes out from the inside of us, God. Your ear is not too heavy, oh God, that you can't hear us, Lord God. And your arm is not too short, God, that you can't reach down, oh God, and pull us out of our situation, God. And we thank you for it now, my God. We thank you for it even now, God. We acknowledge today, oh God, your presence that rests among among us, God. I thank you that you're here already, God. I thank you that you're here already, God. Do what you want to do on tonight, God. Do what you want to do on tonight, God. Change somebody on the inside, Lord. Have mercy now, Lord. Have mercy on a soul tonight, God. Have mercy, oh God, on somebody's life today, God. Pull them from their situation, God. Whatever you want to do on tonight, God, we submit to your will, God. We submit this service now, God, into your hand today, God. Move how you want to move, Lord God. Do what you want to do today, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I thank you even now, my God. I thank you for Jesus tonight, oh God, the author and finisher of our faith, God, the one who died and rose for us, God. We thank you tonight, oh God, for what you did a long time ago, God, even for us, oh God. When you had us on your mind, Lord, God, even when we didn't have you, God, on our minds, oh God, you didn't leave us in our situation, God, you saw it fit, Lord God, to bring us out of the world, God, for even such a time as this, God, and we say thank you tonight, oh God, we say thank you tonight, oh God, come on, saints of God, you ought to clap your hands tonight, you ought to offer up the fruit of your lips tonight, if you know you serve a God today, I can answer your prayer now, if you know you serve a God today, that hears your cry even now, Lord God. We thank you for it, my God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this day, God. God, we just give you a praise. Oh, God, we give you thanks, God. We love your holy name, God. You are worthy. You are merciful, God. And you're worthy to be praised. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We want to welcome you to In His Image, to our appreciation service. And we just ask that you praise God with us and worship with us. Hallelujah. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Let's sing it. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Can't nobody do can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Can't nobody do me. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. Can nobody do me like Jesus? Do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Can nobody save me like?
like Jesus. Can't nobody save me. Save me like the Lord. Can't nobody save me. Save me like Jesus. He's my friend. Can't nobody save me. Can't nobody save me. Save me like Jesus. Can't nobody save me. Save me like the Lord. Can't nobody. Jesus, can't nobody do me, do me like the Lord, can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus, do me like Jesus, he's my friend, can't nobody, can't nobody love me, love me like Jesus, can't nobody love me, love me like the Lord, can't nobody love me. Love me like Jesus. He's my friend. Come on, clap your hands. If you, nobody can do you like Jesus. Clap your hands in this place. Hallelujah. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord, I'm a soldier. In the army, I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord, I'm a soldier. In the army, I got my war clothes on. In the army of the Lord, I got my war clothes on. In the army, I'm a soldier. In the army. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I got my war clothes on. Army of the Lord. Got my war clothes on. In the army. I got my war clothes on. In the army of the Lord. Got my war clothes on. In the army. Hallelujah. I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier. In the army. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier in the army. God is a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, God is a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, my God is a good God. Yes, He is. I serve a mighty, mighty good God. Yes, He is. He's a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, He's mighty, mighty good. Yes, He is. I serve a good God, good God. Yes, He is. I serve a good God, good God. Yes, He is. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. We serve a good God. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody do me like the Lord? Do me like the Lord. Can nobody do me like Jesus? Do me like Jesus. He is my friend. Hallelujah. We serve a great and mighty God. Yes, Lord. Glory. Come on. Hey, y'all, do me, do me one favor. Hey, Elder, come here, Elder. Elder, come here, Elder. Come here. Y'all come back. I want you to sing. Oh, I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord. Oh, I'm a soldier. In the army. I'm a newborn soldier. In the army of the Lord. Oh, I'm a newborn soldier. In the army of the Lord. Oh, I'm a newborn soldier. In the army of the Lord. Oh, 
soldier. In Come on, church. Army. I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord. Oh, I'm a soldier. In the army. Got my war clothes on. In the army of the Lord. I got my war clothes on. In the army. Yes, I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord. Church, I'm a soldier. In the army. Oh, I'm wounded, but I'm winning. In the army of the Lord. Oh, yes. Army. Oh yes, I'm wounded, but I'm winning. In the army of the Lord. Yes, I'm wounded, but I'm winning. In the army. If a man die, in the army of the Lord, he shall live again. In the army. If a man die, in the army come of on, the church, Lord. he shall live again. In the army. Oh, I'm a true born soldier. In the army. Oh, help me up this hill. In the army of the Lord. So I can do God's will. In the army. Oh, help me up this hill. In the army of the Lord. So I can do God's will. In the army. I'm a soldier. In Come on, the church. Army of the Lord. Oh, yes, I'm a soldier.
Well, come on and praise him now. Come on and magnify him. Do we got any soldiers in the house tonight? Oh, Jesus, do we got any soldiers? I'm a soldier in the God's army, and we want to fight. We shall not die but live again. Say yes, somebody. Come on and open your mouth and tell them yes now. Open up your heart and tell them yes, Lord. Uh, I don't care what it looks like, my God. Uh, we're soldiers in God's army, uh, and we come to fight tonight. Is that right? Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together. We thank God for Jesus. Hey, we thank God for the Holy Ghost. We thank God for you, you, and you for being here tonight, my God. The glory of the Lord is already here. Oh, my God. Y'all look real comfortable, so I ain't going to mess with you. I ain't going to push on you. I ain't going to pull on your spirit. We thank God tonight for our pastoral and fellowship service to encourage our bishop, Dennis Thompson, tonight. Amen. We thank God for our elect lady in her absence and our elder Boleg, my God. We thank God for her. We thank God for Pastor Parker in his absence. He's doing well. God is yet restoring him. Amen. Thank God for Elder Day. May God thank God for Evangelist Day. For all the saints and somebody in the house of God. And we're not going to prolong the service no further than what we have already done. We just thank God. Hallelujah. Because we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. I feel you, Sister Day. I hear you. I hear you. That's where I'm at right now. That's where I'm at now. My God, my God. Oh, the glory of the Lord is already here. Hey, hallelujah. Come on, praise him one last time. Oh, Jesus, my God, my God. Oh, that's what we come here for. We didn't come here for a form of fashion. We came because of the Holy Ghost. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto you. My God, he's drawing us on tonight. Hey, thank you, Jesus. We give God all the praise and all the glory. We thank God for the praise and worship team this evening. Amen. We give God the glory. We thank God for Pastor Saida Carter for being with us tonight from Deliverance Worship Center in Deford, New Jersey. We thank God for the woman of God. Amen. We had, a, we had our prayer room there a couple months ago, and we were surely blessed. Amen. We thank God for her husband in the back there. Amen. We thank God for the man of God for being with us tonight. Amen. And those that travel with her, we thank y'all. We thank your, uh, your, your family for being here with us tonight. Amen. And uh, we just want, to, we just, you know, every second Saturday, every second Sunday of each month, we have a, a pastoral service to encourage our leaders for 35 years. Amen. Be 35 years this year. Amen. And we love you much, Bishop. And we just, you know, we just, we don't, we kind of not robbery for everyone to come out. We know how it is. And for a second service, we used to do second services all the time. And it was, it was no problem for people coming out. But now, you know, COVID done hit and all these different things here. So, you know, it's kind of hard to get the people to come out anymore. But nevertheless, God is here. Amen. You is here. Amen. That's all that matters, that he show up in our lives. Amen. And the Bible says his word will not return unto him void. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Carter. If you have anyone want to sing the choir? Amen. Mm -hmm. You can come right. You can come right on now. <laughs> Praise him, saints. Praise the Lord. You see, all my help comes from the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. 
the Lord who made heaven and earth. He said, He shall not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord that keepeth me, he shall not slumber nor sleep. Oh, the Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade. Upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand, no. Upon thy right hand 
Come on and bless him. Oh, come on and give him glory. All of our help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and bless him in this house. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, we thank you. And we honor you this day. God asking that you would send an anointing that will make teaching or preaching effective. Give us spiritual ears to hear what the Spirit will say this day. God, we give you all glory. We give you all honor. Take out the stony hearts. Make it a flesh that the word of God will penetrate on good ground. And God, we give you glory. Asking that you would decrease Pastor Saeed to increase Christ Jesus. And I'm careful to give you all glory and honor. That's do your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at somebody say, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, convince them real good, said, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you are here. So glad you are here. Amen. I, I give honor to God. Amen. You may be seated for my salvation and sanctification. Precious gift of the Holy Spirit abiding on the inside. I'm especially elated to be with my big brother. My big brother. <laughs> Amen. Bishop Dennis Thomas, thank Thompson. Thank you so much for allowing me to grace this pulpit this afternoon. Amen. To Lady Thompson in her absence. Amen. To Elder Boleg and all the elders and pastors that are here that have assembled themselves to Elder Patrick Muir. Thank you for traveling from Philadelphia to be with us today. Amen. To our deacon Russell on the drums there. And thank God for mother coming here. God bless you. Amen. For my daughters over here. Amen. Bandless Kim accompanied me, and thank you, Sister Russell, for that sermonic selection. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. My, my grandsons are in the house. Amen. Praise God for them. Amen. High lengths. And amen. God is good to us. Amen. And thank you to my daughter, Jasmine, Dr. Jasmine, for escorting mother. Amen. She looked like she's 12, but she's, she's a little older. <laughs> amen. amen. So we thank God for her. Amen. I believe there's a word that God has for us today. I pray that God gives it to me, that I can present it to you the way he gave it to me. I feel it way down, as they say, in my sanctified soul. Yeah, they, they said you can feel it in your belly. And I pray that I can get it out of the belly through these lips. Amen. So I want to draw your attention. We're going to go in 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel, I'm sorry, 1 Samuel. The 17th chapter, I'm going to read a few verses there, and then I give you the topic. And I want to not only encourage the pastor, and, you know, after 35 years, what, what do you say? He could tell me a lot. I, I'm in my 12th year, and every now and then, I'm in my bed on a Sunday morning <laughs> and say, do I got to go? Only a pastor knows that. I'm going to get up and come because I, I come. I know I'm there. But there's a toil sometime. There's a wrestle sometime. And sometimes you're like, I'm, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go. And then you pray and say, God, what else can I bring your people? What else can I tell them? Especially after you keep telling them the same thing over and over and over <laughs> and over and over. And they say to you, Pastor, didn't you preach that before? I was like, yeah, but you didn't get it. <laughs> so I'm going to preach it again. <laughs> and they tell me, you know, in education, to break a habit, you got to at least do it at least six months. At least six months for each year old the person is. Yes. So I'm dealing with kids, so it don't take me that long to deal with the kids. But when you deal with adults, six months, that's if they're willing to change. Six months per year they've lived. So depending on the age group <laughs> in the church, we're going to be preaching a whole lot of the same thing over and over again. But be encouraged, amen, because I believe that it will fall, and then one day there's a testimony that comes and said, I got it. When that light bulb comes on, that's a great thing. Amen. No matter when that light bulb comes on, it's a wonderful place to be in. So 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verse number 28. 
I'm going to read a few verses. I'm going to jump around, so if you could bear with me, um, please do. But I'll be in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 17 and 28. I'm reading from the King James Version. The word of God says, And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. I want to ask you the question. You could turn to somebody and say, who told you that? First Samuel 17 and 33. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine, this Philistine, to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. Look at somebody and say, who told you that? 1 Samuel 17, 42 through 44. And when the Philistines looked about, the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and ruddy, and a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Again, I ask, look at somebody and say, who told you that? In this particular story, David, he comes by the request of his father, as we begin, to go and bring his brothers some food. Bring them some lunch while they're prepared for battle because they're in war. So David is by the obedience of his father. He goes down to bring food for his brother. So as David goes down to bring food, he is falsely accused by his brother. Because David is there and he hears the conversation. He hears this, 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 uh, uh, this buggle, this, this, this whole type of aggravation going on because people are afraid of the Philistine. So he brings the food and then he says to them while he's there, who is this uncircumcised Philistine, wait a minute, who is this that would defy the armies of the Lord? Because the army, which is his brother belonged to, they're fearful, they're hiding. He's bringing them food, and then his brother looks at him because now he got a lot of mouth. David, you should be down here. First of all, just do what you're supposed to do. Go back to your sheep and, and stop stirring up trouble. So, in other words, he said to David, he says, why that cometh down hither? He then tells him, you should be with the sheep because you're here in an area you're not supposed to be. Have you ever been in the company of people that said you're not supposed to be here? You're too young for this. You have not proven yourself. And the question is, who told you that? So, so David hears his brother and he said he was disdained. He was very upset about it. And he says to him, he said, I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. David did not come down there to cause trouble. He came down there because someone came against God. And because someone defied the armies of the Lord, he felt that he could do something about it. And so he testified and says that, I will fight this Philistine. Send them to me. And then when Saul hears that David was selected or David was the one to say, listen, I'm going to go against the Philistine. David then has to hear the king says, thou art not able. After he says, I'm more than able. I'm willing to go. While you have an army of men that are hiding and afraid, I'm selected for this time and this hour to fight this giant. You have men that are trained. You have men that are studied. And those have actually have gone through war. They're hiding and afraid, but I'm not. So Saul says to him, thou art not able to go against the Philistine. Why? To fight him because thou art but a youth. Who told you that? 
Who told you that your age, who told you that your background, who your mother, your father is, disqualify you to be the man or the woman of God that God called you to be? So David now had to hear from his brother that falsely accused him. Now he has to hear the king that says, you're not even ready for it. You are not even equipped for it. And then he says to him, I have a testimony. When, when the lion and the bear came after my sheep, I know I'm a shepherd boy. But I have talent and the skill because God anointed me to do the work. He said, when the bear and the lion came for my sheep, I ripped my sheep out of their mouth. And the same God that helped me with the lion and the bear will help me against the Philistine. You got to know the God that you serve. And when negativity come your way, you got to ask the question, who told you that? So now David is going with the king and the king said, you know what? This young guy is so willing to do it. I tell you what, I'm going to give you my armor. I'm going to put on my armor, and you can fight with what I fought with. You can put on my clothes. And then David sat there and said, that's not my size. I can't fit that. I'm not used to fighting that way. When God prepares you to do assignment, you got to realize you got to equip yourself with what you know is right. You can't put on somebody else's garb. You can't put on somebody else's testimony. You got to be true to who you are. Because what happens when the testimony comes through, God will fall through for you. Because the Bible says that we overcome the wicked one by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. David knew what God was able to do. He took off the armor that Saul had given him and he said, I'm going to fight the way I know. He got five smooth stones and a slingshot. And that's what he used. But before he got there, there was something else he had to come against. Now he heard his brother falsely accuse him. Uh, he, he, he heard the king doubt him. And now the one that he's coming against, the giant, Goliath, he was disdained by his presence. He looked as if, why would you send someone of low caliber, someone of low esteem, someone that had not proven themselves to come fight me? He said it was youth, he was a youth, but he, a youth and ruddy, fair countenance, meaning that he was young looking. He, he wasn't a man of war, he was not a warrior. And the Philistine said, he said he addressed David, my God. He addressed him, he said, am I a dog that that come with, with me with staves? He saw the slingshot. He saw David with his little slingshot. He said, so you're going to come to me with just that? And he says to him, he cursed David. By his gods. That's the that's the that's a problem right there. Because David now coming in the name of the Lord, the one and only God, right? So the so Philistine thought he had power by cursing David by his gods. And then he says, and the Philistine scene said unto him, he said, Come to me. He's challenging him. He's threatening him. And once God has victory for us, there's always going to be a challenge. There's always going to be a threat. There's always going to be someone to put you down, someone that's going to talk about you and discredit who you are as a woman or a man of God. He says this. He said, come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air. That's the problem. He spoke something that did not exist because who told him that that was going to happen? This is what he said was going to happen, but the opposite happened because David used God Almighty. David used what God had given him, and that was a slingshot. And it was one stone that was enough to hit him in the middle of the head, as they would say, and he fell down. And then the sword that Goliath had was the one that took off his own head. I'm saying to you, it doesn't matter what the enemy say. It doesn't matter what the enemy does. God has the last say. And if you know that God will anoint that who he anoints, he will bless whom he will bless. He will curse whom he will curse. And if God blesses you, can no man curse you. And if God curses you, can no man bless you. You got to get to a point to know who you are and whose you are in God. First Samuel, the 16th chapter. Through this and all of this is happening. David was falsely accused by his brethren. He was rejected by Saul, teased and belittled by Goliath. And it comes to a point in his life that Saul had lost his anointing and favor with God. And God had instructed Samuel, the, the prophet, to anoint another king. Verse number 1 in chapter number 16 said, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill the horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, 
for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he'll kill me. And the Lord said, take an heifer with thee and say, I come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Cometh thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sacrificed Jesse and his sons, and he called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass that when they were come, and he looked at Elihad and said, Surely the Lord's anointing anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on his height of stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for the man looketh at the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him the pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither have the Lord chosen this. And then Jesse made Shammoth to pass, neither have the Lord chosen this. And he said, Neither have the Lord chosen this. And again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord have not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now this story, it gets me every time. Because think about this. If Jesse, if, if Jesse had sons... And he did not present his last son. That means that he did not think that David was worthy to be a king. Because he would have brought all of his sons. And he went through all of the sons. And Samuel thinking that that was his sons that were there. But the Lord had rejected because God said, I'm not looking on the outward appearance. It's inwardly I'm working on. It's, it's, it's enough that your, your brothers don't like you. It's, it's enough that the king... Uh, 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 rejected you. It's enough that the enemy doesn't look at you and think that you're able to do it. But when your own family members, when your own father, your own mother, the song said, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. But here, Saul has been rejected by God and God is sending his prophet to anoint another king. When he gets to Jesse's house, Jesse shows all the son but one. And then he said, is there any other sons? Because Samuel knew that God sent him to Jesse's house. There has to be another. I can't rest until another one comes. He said, I have one more. If you, you ever been passed over so many times? Have you been looked over so many times? So, so who told Jesse? Who told him that, 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 that David wouldn't be king? Who told him that? So here he comes and the Lord says, anoint him. David was anointed by the prophet Samuel and he began serving the king Saul. Could you imagine serving someone that really don't like you? that really don't like you, to the point that they sought to kill him, disdained his anointed. It's amazing that when David was in battle, when Saul was in bat battle, the Bible says that they begin to sing songs about Saul killing his thousands and David killing his ten thousand. David didn't realize the songs were going on, but Saul heard the songs. Do you know that there's conversations happening in the rooms that you're not able to hear? Somebody's testifying of your goodness and what you've done and others are getting mad at you. And when they see you, they upset at you and you have no clue why. Because God has already pronounced who you are from the foundations of this world since you were shaped in your mother's womb. God already has a plan for your life. He has an assignment for you. And it doesn't matter who says you're not equipped, who says you're not ready. If God says you're ready, then you're ready. 
If God has ordained you, then God has ordained you. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're experiencing. It doesn't matter who doubts you. If God is for you, he's more than the world against you. If God has equipped you, then you fight like you equipped. David had it made up in his mind that he was going to do what God called him to do. Even when he had an opportunity to harm the Saul, he did not because that was God's anointing. And so it was. He's anointed by the prophet Samuel. He began serving the king Saul as a musician and an armor bearer. Before he faced Goliath, he was anointed by God. Before he was rejected by his brother, he was anointed by God. Is it possible for you to be anointed and declared to be something and have to wait before seeing it manifest in your life? Is there a waiting period? What are you doing during that waiting period? What do you do when God has equipped you? What do, what do you do when God has called you to a word and he says, wait, you still serve? That they that wait upon the Lord. He shall renew their strength, right? The weight on the Lord. And then you can run and not be weary, and you can walk and not faint. That weight on the Lord means I'm going to serve him. And not, not, not the weight that you're going to sit down and do nothing. The weight is that as the waiter and the waitress in, in the restaurant. No one wants a bad waiter. Some of us love the Lord, but we get very angry if we got the wrong waiter or waitress. Because we anticipate them to do what they say they will do, wait on the table. Now, a good waiter or waitress will constantly come back to the table to make sure you have enough water. They come back to make sure you have everything you need because they're constantly checking on you. So what are we doing while God has anointed us to do a work? We should be checking on them. God, what is it that you want me to do? God, how can I serve you? How can I serve your people? How can I serve my pastor? What is it that you called me to do? God, I'm here for your service. So when you begin to serve him, you can run and not be weary. You can walk and not faint. Then you will mount up with wings and eat. your strength comes in when you serve God. David knew where his strength lied. He knew where his strength came from. It came from God. Because he said, I'm not coming. My God. I'm not coming in any other name but God. The God that you defy. The God that you reject. The God that you know not of. When you know God for yourself, it doesn't matter what anyone says. If God is for me, he's more than the world against me. You got to know who God is for you. The God in you shows up when you show up because God is in us. And as he's in us, he shows us what to do, when to do, how to do, whatever company we come in. He, we show up. He shows up in us. Could it be, my God, that when God shows up in us, that the enemy tremble, that the enemy gets afraid? Could you imagine if they were really nice to David? If they didn't talk about him, if they didn't reject him, sometimes, sometimes what's in you comes out under pressure, under rejection, under hardships. Sometimes we don't know what we're made of until we go through something. And we don't know that God is a deliverer if we never had to be delivered from something. We would know that he's a healer if we have not been sick before. So there has to be some kind of thing that happened to us that we will realize that God is. That's why we overcome the wicked one. Let me tell my testimony. Let me testify why I have a chance. That's why David was able to tell his testimony. I know what the lion and the bear had done. So I know you think that I can't fight this uncircumcised Philistine. I know you think that I'm not a man of war but the God that I serve is more than able the God that I serve will get in the rock the God that I serve will get in my hand if the God that I serve is able to give me strength beyond strength because that's who I serve when God shows up in us uh, whenever that doubt comes in your mind you say who told you that who said that we're not more than the conqueror we are more than the conqueror through him that lover who said that God is not able he is able who said that God did not anoint me God did anoint if God can do it if God can do it through me then he can and he will hallelujah hallelujah Abraham was called blessed and the father of nations before he even had his promised child. It was 25 years after God called him blessed and that he would have, he would be the father of many nations. 25 years span before 
the promise will come to pass. Some of us are, are, are tired now, weary now, because it didn't happen in two months. It didn't happen in, 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 in five years, weary. We've been praying and been fasting, God, I know it's my time, God, I know it's my time. But they say, who told you that it's not going to come to pass? Who told you that God was not going to do it? So, so even if Abraham was called blessed and the father of many nations prior to 25 years later that he had the promised child for Isaac. And the thing about it with Abraham is we would do today. We would try to fix things and try to make things happen. No, you don't have to do anything. If God says he's going to do it, we really don't need to help him out. He can do it all by himself. Sometimes doors will close and God will open the window. And if there's no window that needs to be open, God will open the roof. God is more than able to complete his promise that he said he would do. When that negativity comes your way, you ask the question, who told you that? You got to get emphatic about that because somebody's going to tell you you're not supposed to be sitting in certain places. You're not supposed to get certain prom um, promotions and you should not be in certain companies. You say, who told you that? God placed you there for a reason. Joseph was declared a prosperous man while he was a slave in Potiphar's house. God was blessing him. He was with God. God was with Joseph. God was with Joseph. Through all that Joseph had gone through, you would think that he would not be second in command years later. Where he started is not where he ended. Because all the way through all that he had to go through, somebody was trying to discourage him. To the point that he did not realize, well, he knew he was a dreamer. He had his dream. God blessed him with his dream, and his dream would just brought him out. Sometimes it takes a while for us to get to where God has us to be. But don't allow your circumstance or your situations to stop you from believing what God said over your life. And I asked the question again, who told you that? Who told you that? <laughs> this disciple, I really like. Because Peter was that disciple that he was very impulsive. <laughs> he was a fighter. He was a cusser. He was always defending Jesus. He always was there when Jesus called. It was three of them that was with him, Peter, James, and John most of the time. But Peter was that aggressor. Peter was the one that believed that he was the son of God. He was the one that said it, even though Jesus had asked everyone, who do men say that I am? You know, they believed that he might have been a prophet that came back, all, all the above. But he says to him, who do you think that I am? Who do you say that I am? So we know that there's gossip out there. And sometimes there's some things about you that's out there. Do you ask that question of others? Who do people say that I am? Do you inquire about yourself? Some of us don't want to inquire about ourselves. I know might be difficult to hear the truth about who you are. But every now and then we have to ask people, who do men say that I am? And when Jesus asked that question, the Peter came up with an answer. Those that are closest to you will say that. And I can imagine only Jesus saying to him, who told you that? Who told you that? But that's the buzz out on the street. And he said, but who do you say that I am? And then he says to him that thou art the son of the living God. He said, well, I know that my father told you that. There has to be a connection. There has to be some kind of knowledge, some kind of spiritual knowledge, because there has to be a relationship, because that's not easy to detect. Because if others are saying something else about this, someone is looking deep into your soul or who you really are. Sometimes we don't know who we are until we ask somebody. The truth of the matter is that this, we really know who we are. David knew who he was. Joseph knew who he was. Abraham knew who he was because God already told him who he was. Most of us know our character, right? Our character is what we know about ourselves. Some of us know about ourselves. We know what makes us upset. Yeah, we do. We, we save, yes. But we know what gets us upset. We, we know what, when, when our um, pressure begins to rise. We know who does that to us. Sometimes we try not to be in those company. Right? So we try to separate ourselves from those people. Are you that person when you come, people separate themselves from you? What do people say when you show up? Hmm. So your character is what you know about yourself. Your reputation is what others think about you. And most of the time, <laughs> our reputations may have some truth to it. 
So the character is what I know about myself. Reputation is what others think about me. But my integrity is when my reputation and my character becomes one. How do I behave when the doors are closed? When no one's around? The conversations that I have. That's when God shows up in us. And see, what we don't realize, the pressures of life get all of that stuff out of us that does not re reflect God. So that's why when we show up for battle, sometimes we lose because God is not in us. We, we, we've given ourselves all kinds of stuff and put it in and say, here, take this guy. David can come in God's name. Abraham can come as a, a father of faith. And, 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 and Joseph can say, the Lord is with me because he kept God. For, he told Potiphar's wife, it ain't even about you. In other words, it really ain't about you. I can't do this in the sight of my God. Because his integrity was at place. His character is he knows what about himself. His reputation that he was a man of God. And now my integrity is in question. You're going to run into places where your integrity will be questioned. If you're having a conversation at home at your job that you can't have in church in front of your pastor, you should not be saying it. Tell me I ain't got the I can't help it. You can't. You can help it. Call temperance. <laughs> I have young people in school that when they get in school, they have a different face, Bishop. They want to kick the teacher. They try to fight me. Spit on you. Fall all out. Rolling all on the floor. Trying to use cuss words. It ain't coming out right, but I know what they're trying to say. And they acting all up. And you got to make that phone call. Sometimes the mothers understand, daddies understand. Yeah, that sound like them. And then there's others who said, that ain't my child. I said, I tell you what, come on down here. And I'm going to show you what they do. But just before they get, this is, this, is the, this, is the, this is the key. This is how I know if that kid got self-control. I say this to them, and this is key to us as believers. I tell you what, when your mama come here, I want you to kick her, spit on her, cuss her all up and down, because that's the way you act. No, oh no, don't tell me no. Because you can't help yourself. You blacked out. Black out when she get here. See how much control you got. Daddy's on his way right now. No, 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 no. Get up. No. Scrub the floor with that uniform that your mother done pressed and made all clean. When she come in, show how you clean our floor up for us because you're rolling all over the floor. <laughs> that same spirit, unfortunately, is in the church. And everyone wants an excuse of why they should act the way they want to act. And guys, I'm saying, no, who told you you're supposed to act that way? So that means there's some kind of self-control. You know who you are. You know you can help yourself. Someone wants to give an excuse for it. But we got to live this thing in public and behind closed doors. Because when you want God to show up for you, he will. If you would delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. I want God to show up for me in every capacity and everything that I do. So first, I got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added. Most of us are defeating ourselves because we're wrestling with our own flesh and what we don't want to do. Because somebody made us mad. Peter was impulsive. He was impulsive. But Jesus said something to Peter. He asked him a question, do you love me? Peter said, yeah, I love you. He said, yeah, feed my sheep. Peter, do you, yeah, I love you, Lord. Come on, feed my sheep. And he, and he said, well, Lord, you know I love you. In other words, Peter was saying right there in front of Jesus, this is what we do. Lord, I love you. Ain't no pressure. Peter ain't got no pressure. He right there in front of Jesus. Jesus with him. Ain't no pressure. 
The blessings of the Lord is in the house of what? No pressure. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I'm a soldier. Yeah. Oh, I got you, Lord. Yes. Pressure comes. Then the true you shows up. But Jesus also said to Peter, I know you. I know you, Peter. I know that's Simon Peter, the rock. I know who you are. And he said, I know that you understand that I'm the son of God. God told that to you. He said, but upon that concept, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. But he also told Peter, he said, you're going to deny me three times. Peter's like, not me, Lord, not the one that knew you was walking on water and I came down. Not the one that cut off the high priest servant's ear. Not him, not, not Peter. Because Peter, character, is in, in, in his reputation were different. But Jesus knew the integrity. My God. Some of us are wild. <laughs> Some of us are cussers. <laughs> Some brawlers. But the integrity deep down in the heart, there's something good there. So don't let nobody tell you just because of what they see is what you're going to become. Because they, they God, God does not look at the outward appearance. It might be rusty and dusty. But inside of that heart, there's something that God can use. He says to Peter this. He says, listen, the enemy, the devil himself desires to sift you as we. Can I tell you that the enemy is trying to sift us? As we, as we're going to fulfill what God has called us to do, our purpose, our assignment, and the enemy is just taking us, tossing us here, there, up and down. You see one incident happen in your family, something else happen with your family, you get a phone call here. All of this is to knock you off, off your praise, off track, lose your joy, lose your peace, start fussing and cussing and stop praising God. Stop coming to church, stop coming to prayer, don't fast, don't do any of that because I'm angry, I'm mad. You ever hear somebody say, I'm just mad. I'm angry. As my students tell me, I'm just mad, Ms. Carter. Why are you mad? I don't know why I'm mad. I'm just mad. And someone get mad mad. I understand they mad because they don't want to do something. And they're being forced to do something they really don't want to do. And that's what we get, spiritually mad mad. And God said if you would just hold on. All of that's inside of you. All, all that I made you is going to come out. It's going to come out one way or the other. I don't care who told you it's not. I don't care who told you you were not going to make it. He said, and Peter, you... That concept, I'm going to build my church. You, Peter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use. He said, listen, I'm praying for you. I pray for you so that you can strengthen your brother. It is by faith. You're going to go through some things, Peter. But by the end of this time, you're going to strengthen your brother. It's going to be your faith that's going to allow you to preach after we're all in the upper room. And when the Holy Ghost fall upon you, you're going to preach to thousands and thousands. Souls will come. It's just, just like that. God can use you. Stop allowing the enemy to tell you it's not you. Stop letting the enemy tell you you're not made for this. You are made for this because God made you who you are. He has already equipped us to do the job that he called us to do. If the enemy can put our lights out, he would. I told the young lady just this morning, early this morning, she had tears in her eyes. And she was saying to me, it's just so hard. It seemed as if I'm getting attacked from every angle. I said the problem, and this is the, this is the attack of the believer with a call on their life that has an assignment. I'm telling you now, the enemy wants to dim the lights. And I said to her, stars don't lose their light. In the dark, they shine the brightest. In the darkest hours, that's when God wants to use us. We are a work-wise day. The night come can no man work. We should be a light in the dark world. The darker the situation is, I said the problem with most of us, when there's problems that need to be solved, we're the one that can solve them. God has put us in place to solve problems. I'm telling you now, in this day in time, people will seek you out. They're going to seek you out to solve problems. Why? Because we have what God has given to us for an assignment. That's why we are strategically placed in certain positions 
certain areas, certain regions, is because God is using us in certain platforms and education and government. There's places that we need to be, but the enemy is trying to push you out. You can't do this. You're not equipped for that. You don't have enough education. Who told you that? We are strategically placed to do the will of God. And, God, and I'm telling you, the enemy is trying to push us out a place through family members, through people of power and political power. All of this has happened. David went through all of that. His brother, the king, his enemy, then his father. All of the, Do you understand all of these attacks are going to come? It can't stop us. Joseph had to go through with his brethren. David had to experience what he had to experience. Joseph, Abraham, all the above. Peter had to struggle with himself and what he had done. But he was the man that came and won souls. He was the one that preached, cussing Peter, now preaching. What God won't do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the Bible declares, and I'm almost finished, Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And the Bible says in Romans 8 and 28, and we know all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his, person, per, his purpose. God has a purpose for all of us. God has a will for all of us. When our character and our reputation comes together and our integrity is impeccable, I'm telling you, God will work miracles through us. God will do what he said he will do. He's going to perform that which he said he's going to perform because he cannot lie. If God wants to use somebody, why not you? Hallelujah. But we got to go through something. We got to experience some things. We got to go through some things. Sometimes there might be some crying at night. There might be some lonely times. There may be some rejection at times. You might have to walk away a few things. But God of God of all will give you what he said he would. He cannot lie. The Bible declares in 1 Peter 5 and 10, but the God of all grace who have called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while. That suffering we don't want to do. That suffering we don't want to give into. But I'm telling you, after you have suffered a while, God got a plan. God got something coming after that suffering. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver him out of it all. I know sometimes it seems like it's difficult. I know sometimes it feels like you can't get out. But I'm telling you, after you have suffered a while, the Bible declares that he will make you perfect. He will establish you. He will settle you and he will strengthen you. There are seasons that we got to go through in life. And so it is spring right now. Some of the trees are still barren from fall, but I, I mean from the winter time. But I declare to you, if you wait a while, you'll start seeing things budding. you start seeing things coming through. So you've gone through your winter season. It's springtime now. And then God is about to put some leaves on the tree because he said we shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. And our leaves you shall never wither but I want to be planted by the rivers of water that in due season and every season that it come through my fruit will be there my fruit will be bare see the thing about it we want fruit all the time but it's not going to happen all the time we may be barren we may go through but in due season it shall change God got a plan for your life God got a plan who told you you wasn't going to make it who told you you were in the wrong place who told you you were not a prayer warrior who told you you were not an innocent who told you you were not a preacher? Who told you you were not loving? Who told you you were hateful? Who told you I'd never make it? Who told you that? Hallelujah. I come to let you know that God is for you. And if he's for you, he's more than the world against you. You got to get in touch with the man that can do all things but fail. We got to find a time of worship. We got to find a time to get down at his feet. We got to find a time to find God where he's passing by. The laborers, the laborers are out there. Oh, but the laborers are few, but the harvest is plenteous. There's so much work to do. Can he send you? Can he trust you? After you have suffered a while, after you have gone through some things, God said, I'll strengthen you. I'll settle you and I'll establish you and I'll make you perfect. Weeping is just for a night. Weeping is just for a time. You've been through enough right now, but 
I declare to you, if you rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. The Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. We're strange people anyway, so why not give God glory? Why not give God praise in the midst of our storm, in the midst of our trouble, in the midst of our rejection, in the midst of our kind? Because this too will pass. I will smile again. The sun's going to come out. I will rejoice in the Lord. Give God glory. Give God praise in spite of what it looks like, in spite of how you feel. This too will pass. Hallelujah. 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 You got to get to a place that God will change your name. You got to wrestle some time with yourself. They always talk about Jacob wrestling with an angel. But I believe before the angel came, I think he had to wrestle with himself. Most of the time, we don't want to wrestle with ourselves because we really know our character. We know how nasty we are. You know how you think about some things in your head. You say, I, I would, I could, I should have. We wrestle with ourselves when it's time for prayer. Y'all know how we are when it's time for prayer. We got to think about five or six or seven or eight, nine things. We got to pray at least 20 minutes to get out of ourselves alone because this flesh is nasty. And you got to wrestle sometime. Jacob was called a trickster. He had to realized that he would not want to be a trickster long enough. There's some names that have been pronounced over you since you were a child and you've been wrestling with that thing, wrestling with that generational curse and you're still struggling with something and God says sometimes you just gotta wrestle with yourself. You gotta wrestle to the place that God will show up for you. When you pray long enough out of yourself I believe an angel will come and minister to you but you gotta get out of your flesh get out of yourself get out of who you are. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Look to the hills which come with your help. Your help come from the Lord. Call on the Lord while he's near. Call on him while he is here. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and give God praise. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. God, we glorify you. God, we magnify you. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. Hallelujah. Let the hallelujah roll. Hallelujah. Way down in my sanctified soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While we're praying and while we're going through encouraging ourselves and getting ourselves out, of these holes and different things and God began to show me three things while you're going through all of that questioning who told you that when you struggle with yourself when you finally find out that your assignment that God has for you is for you and you're ready to step out God will close all the portals that the enemy is open against you he will stay back the hand of the enemy. When, when, when my ways please the Lord, even my enemies. Do y'all understand how good that is? Even my enemies will be at peace when my ways please the Lord. There's something I got to do. Some things I got to shun. My integrity is contingent upon my character. And my reputation, when my ways please the Lord. Does the Bible say there's some things that should not be named among us once as believers? God will close all portals. He's closing them. And he's holding off the hand of the enemy. And can I tell you, the enemy is trying his best to open up all kinds of portals. Because they are traps where they have demonic forces that can overtake, but they cannot penetrate the Holy Spirit. Don't you know how important to have God on the inside? You ever go in a room and people say, well, who just showed up? They walk in, you walk in the room, they say, who that? It's the God in you. They can't determine what it is. They can't reckon, but they know it's something. But the demons know. <laughs> they know. When Jesus, but listen, Jesus came through town and the demon squealed. What have we done that you come and bother us? He showed up at the graveyard where Legion was. Them demons was like, man, here he come. How 
many demons say that when you show up? <laughs> they know their time was up. And the key moment when demons know they got to come out, they're going to tear the body in their hand, who they were using. Remember the demon that fell out as if he was dead, foaming all at the mouth? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Jesus don't just come on out. But he had to perform first. <laughs> he had to say, I'm in there. Legion speaks. I'm legion. We many. Jesus didn't care how many it were. He had no long conversation with the demon. Asked him his name. Okay, fine. Come out. But they need permission to go somewhere. If we're not filled with the Holy Spirit, them demons are going to find a place. Portals. 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 So if you're clean, stay clean. Because Jesus said, listen, that demon is going to go through some places. They're going to look for some rest. They can't find it. They're going to go back to where they came from. And they're going to bring some others with them. And the state of that man, there's seven more, right? And he said the state of that man would be worse than it was before. Can I tell you that you're not going to have a list to tell them which demons to bring with them? You ain't going to tell the devil which demons to bring. That's why you said, what happened to them? Suicide spirit, depression spirit angry all he said come on cousins we got a place you understand why our character and our reputation have to exemplify the God in us because the seed that God plants in us is the word that we receive Bishop God showed me this in my prayer room one morning I just want I want to just share this he just brought it to me just now the seed of the word is so important. And he gave the parable about the seed falling by the wayside and the ground, all of that. And people always talk about that as being money. You know, because everybody wants everybody to be blessed. But how about the seed of the word that God gives us? And when we receive the word, it comes on good ground. Then we become the carriers of the word of God. And then Jesus begins to explain the kingdom. So he takes the seed, we, us, the seed of the word for kingdom purpose, and he plants us in the ground. Do you know what happens in the ground to the seed? We die. We get to a dark place. That's the place we don't want to get to. Because we don't know. Sometimes, Bishop, I don't have an answer. I don't know which way to go. God said, because you're in the ground. It's dark. We know that the seed opens up and the pillings of the outside, it comes out. We got to evolve into what God made us. You can't become a tree, my God, until you die. In the ground, struggling going through changes, evolving, and then you shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. We're set in the kingdom for purpose, but in the same parable, he says, while the master slept, the enemy sowed tears among the wheat. God planted us, and the enemy says, I'm going to do the same thing God does. So he plants bishops, apostles, prophets among the righteous. They look the same. They blend in the same. And we know that ain't of God. But God says, let them grow together. I'll do the separating. So don't get weary in doing what God called you to do. Don't worry about the tears. The tears going, they got that day. You keep doing kingdom work. What the tears want to do is intermingle. Get the roots in with the kingdom so they can blend in. But because of the strength that we have, my God. Because we have the anointing of God. They can play around, but they can't live right. They can't produce the power. They can't produce the miracle because they don't have the life that lives it. Because at the end, it's going to show like the shaft that just blows in the wind. 
Because when wheat goes up, it goes back into the ground and produce more. My God. Because the heaviness of the wheat seed goes back down. But the shaft, the tares, just fly in the wind. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Who told you you wasn't that seed? God shuts the portal, the portals. And you have to identify the originator of your story. That's God. Don't believe all the other stuff. Go to the source. I tell everybody all the time, and I'm not bragging about it, but I'm not bragging, so just, just take it as a testimony. I am not going to take my car to Toyota to get it fixed. They didn't make the car. And if they're smart enough, they say, you can't take the car to us. Take it to Mercedes. They made the car. They know the car. One guy told me, you got so many, <laughs> what's some things called, Brother Dave? Indicators? What's some things called when you put, you, you check engine light, come on in, and they give you codes? He said, you got so many codes, over 40-something codes on your car. Ain't nothing I could do with that. You got to take it back. To Mercedes. You understand? No matter what you go through, you got to take that back to God. Fall on your face and take it to God. Hallelujah. And everything you have to do, you got to rebuke the lies. Jesus even told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. And Peter was a disciple selected by God but he told him to get behind me Satan because he was interfering with the will of God you got to be strong enough to tell those ones that you love get thee behind me Satan I'm on an assignment from God I'm on an assignment from God stand to your feet all over this place Let's just bow our heads and we just gonna pray ask that question who told you that where you are right now what's your assignment where God has placed you and what the enemy has fought but remember after you have suffered a while after you've gone through some things David went through some things Joseph have gone through some things Abraham have gone through some things Peter have gone through some things Jacob have gone through some things you put your name in it you've gone through some things Job have gone through some things but the end result is where God wants to take us. For your ladder to be greater than where you are now. Stay the course and stop hearing the naysay. Knowing that the tares are wit, the wheat. No, they're growing together. The roots are intermingled. They're all looking the same. But whatever the enemy plants, it will not stand. It will not last. It will fall. Just like trees are uprooted during the storms. Sometimes they've been there too long. Sometimes it wasn't strong enough and they were just by the wrong areas. That's why they break through the concrete to the sidewalk because there's no root. There's no root. There's nothing to grab down. That's, that's like the spiritually. Let us get rooted and grounded in the word. Let us be anchored in him. Let us be anchored in him. Let us be strengthened by God. Lord, we thank you. Every heart pray now. Every heart pray now. Lord, we thank you. We honor you for this day. We thank you for what our ears have heard and our hearts have received. God, let us not hear the naysayers. Let us press forward in what you've called us to do. Let us move on what you've called us to do. Let us go for you. Let our testimony last. That if you've done it then, you'll do it again. You're the same God yesterday. The same God that used David. The same God wants to use us today. As we wrestle with ourselves and then talk to the angel and speak to you, God, use us for your glory. Strengthen us in our hands, God. We pray now for Bishop, God. We thank you for this house. We thank you for in this image ministries. We thank you for Lady Thompson. God, anointed and fresh and new in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the pastors and the elders that have come out of this ministry, God. Continue to bless them, God. Let them want for nothing. And God, we thank you and we glorify you. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on,
praise God. We want to bless God. Thank God for the word. Hallelujah. Talk about that character. Thank God. We give God the praise and the glory. Pray that you was blessed tonight. We're going to prepare ourselves for giving. Amen. We thank God. We heard some of that same stuff this morning. <laughs> that sore went forth to sow. My God. Talking about that heart. That stony ground. Amen. He said, once have I heard it. Twice. <laughs> Sometimes you got to hear a thing twice over. Amen. Amen. You got to get it down in the heart. I like what she said, though. She said, it takes six months to for a change for adults. Amen. We give God the praise and the glory. Amen. We have uh, our cash out. Our sister Nikki's in the back if you need to swipe. Amen. Well, our sister have envelopes. We have our cash app, our give a fly. Amen. Our cue cards up on the, on the monitor there. If you need to take a picture of it. Amen. So uh, if everybody is willing and they ready to give, you can rest to your feet. Amen. How about this? Just come from wherever you are. Amen. We'll do it like that tonight. Amen. Amen. Just come from wherever you are and give your seed and we'll bless God tonight for that. You can go ahead and play something there, my brother. God bless you, sir. Amen. 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 Oh, yes. We thank God for Jesus tonight. Father, we just ask that you look upon this offering tonight. We ask you to bless it, bless those that wasn't able to give, that they may give at the next appointed time, and we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, come on and put your hands together. Thank God for our bishop. We thank God for this great woman of God again. Thank God for that word. Amen. Right on time. Amen. You can all rest to your feet. Amen. We can all stand. We get ready to be dismissed. 
Father, we just give you praise. We thank you tonight, God. We ask that you would give us traveling mercies. Keep us from dangerous scenes and unseen, God, from hurt and harm. Father, we just thank you right now, God, for keeping us and for watching over us as we go back down the highways and how we find our home in decency and in order. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.